Hey there, this is Mo Fine, and um, I'm going to teach you guys today how to make a banner for your blog. Um, <clears throat> look at look at this really cool site that I got up here. It's called Coco Eyes. Uh, Coco Eyes, the Stitcher .blogspot .com. This is my friend Elisa's uh, new new stitch, stab, and scrawl site, and uh, she has some like incredible, wonderful stuff up here that she makes. Um, <clears throat> like, uh, check these guys out, the bulbs, and they got these faces, and they're they're so cute they got so much personality along with all all these other things that she does and oh my god i discovered these a couple of days ago the evolution of christmas aliens are those the cutest things you've ever seen in your life i mean look at them it's like they want so badly to be evil but they can't like this one's like i'm evil i'm evil this one's like, hey, I don't know. I'm just confused. I'm trying to be evil, but I'm just sweet. Anyways, I'm getting one of these, which is very exciting. I think I'm getting a little boy, but I don't know which one's the little boy because they're androgynous. Anyway, she like draws them out, and then she talks about it. Yeah, it's really cool. Fun sight and um, very colorful. Um, so, always come to me, and she's like, Mo, uh, I need a banner. And I want to um, put put these green... Um, these green guys with big ears uh, on my banner and uh what can you do so let's talk about this i'm going first thing you want to do is figure out the size of a banner uh for f for a blog obviously the site wasn't up when i created this so i went to another site and uh looked at their banners and i right clicked on the banner image went down to the bottom after you right click say view vi view image info and right here it tells you the dimension 760 by 234 very important because when you go over to photoshop you're going to want to create a blank canvas that's um, that's 760 by, what did I say, 234. Let's take a look at the anatomy of this. We got uh, Cocoa Eyes. If I go over to the Layers palette, you see the Layers Cocoa Eyes, which was, if I take the eye off, you can see it's that. It's a uh, background copy. If I take the eye off, you can see that that's those guys. And so what we're going to do is we're going to um, break this down a little simpler because these guys originally started off like this. And the banner we're going to make today is going to have them in this background. In another tutorial, we'll show you how to mask them out so they're not in that background. Um, you know, it's a little bit more advanced, certainly not a difficult thing. But um, just for the sake of this tutorial, let's create something similar to this. First thing you want to do is you want to, um, well, after you figure out the size, you want to go to File, New, and Create a Blank Canvas. Um, 760 by 234. Let's call this uh, banner tutorial, which is what you'll write up at the name. It's just very important to kind of go through the dialog boxes when they open it and just read them one by one. And it's asking me what's the width? 760. We want it to be pixels, not inches. Pixels, because we're dealing with something that's for the web. Uh, 234 would be the height, and again, that needs to be in pixels. And 72 would be the resolution because <clears throat> because uh, that. It's for the web, and you don't really need it to be any higher quality. If you're printing it, you might want to put it at 300 or whatever the uh, printer suggested. And the background contents would be white. That just means the canvas is going to be blank white. And you hit OK, and this blank box opens up. Well, the first thing you want to do now, once you have this, is to make the frame. And the frame exists in the, um, in the uh, shape tool. So I got the custom shape tool. And uh, which is down here in your toolbox. And you notice it looks like a little starfish and you click on it and up here, just like with all tools, all the different parameters and different things that you can do with them will show up here. It's like changing a head on a screwdriver. And so we wanna make sure here are the different shapes. You can choose a rounded one, you know, which would just give you a rounded shape and uh, you can change like the radius of the roundedness. But if you hit the one on the far right, the one that looks like a starfish, it, these things over here change and then you go to this little shape box and you click the arrow and you can pick and you can pick a dog whatever you want your shape to be but we're going to want one that looks like something like stitching i thought that would be kind of cool so once you choose that it highlights right here so you know exactly what you're going to be doing you click back on your canvas and then you just draw and boom you got a shape and watch your layers palette watch my layers palette and you see another shape was created but this little box is saying that it's white and we don't want it to be white we want to give it a color so we can see it and for now let's just give it red all right we'll change that Okay, and then when I click off that shape, just somewhere else in the layers palette, it takes away that goofy line, and uh, there you go. Now, the other thing we want to do is bring in the little guys. So, let's go to the original photograph of this, and what you do is you go to the top of your tool palette and click the selection tool, move tool. And you click it, you go hang over your photograph, and you click and drag over your banner tutorial, the one I just created, and you drop it in there. 
you notice once I drop it in there, it's just absolutely huge. It's too big, so we have to shrink it. You shrink it by going to Edit, Transform, Scale. And then, of course, just like the Shape tool, all these parameters change up here, and you can do different things. Well, we want to, like, just scale it down. thing is, if I just scale the width, it's going to start squishing it, and the same thing with the height. We want it to scale in proportion, so you make sure you hit the lock. All these applications have a lock of some sort mostly for this purpose so things don't scale out of proportion so you make sure you click on that and you just hang your mouse over the w or the h and you can just scroll one way and says so you know you scroll to the right you're getting bigger you scroll to the left you're getting smaller and then let's do it right about here and then you hit return or enter depending if you're on a mac or a pc and you can put them right there you can also say well let's give it a little bit of an angle and so I can go back to that transform and uh, hit rotate instead of scale. And what maybe we could put on a little angle like that. Okay. Then I'm going to hit apply. And um, okay. And then the next thing you'd want to do is uh, get your type tool. Click on it and go over your canvas. And you click in the area. And if you notice in your layers palette, when you hit the type tool, it automatically creates a new layer for you. And then we can type in Cocoa Eyes. Oh, but you notice that's doing the same thing the shape did. It's You can't see it. And if you look at the top, where all the parameters for your type tool are, you notice that it's white. So I'm going to highlight that area, make sure it changes, and then let's just change that to um, something like a brown, which should have a little red in it, because you want to make it cocoa color. There you go. And then uh, let's call this a uh, Helvetica. And uh, let's increase the size. See, I'm going up here. It's all done up here. Uh, maybe even a little bigger. And maybe a little bold. And as you see, once I do that and I go back to my selector tool, Cocoa Eyes is what shows up in my layers palette. And now it's its own thing. And then the next one you'd want to do is go back to the type tool. You want to make sure you're away from Cocoa's Eyes because if I put this text tool right next to Cocoa Eyes, it kind of changes the cursor and that means you're going to be typing on that layer. We want to make sure Stitch, Stab, and Scrawl is on its own layer so we can move it around separately. So I just click safely away from Cocoa Eyes. And I know I'm going to want it a lot smaller, so let's bring this down to 18. And we'll go right in Stitch, uh, Stab, and Scrawl. And uh, I'm going to want to increase that size. I'm going to highlight it. And um, it 36 is pretty good, and I think this was something like chalk. So you just go up to the top where it says Helvetica. Helvetica. You can just type in the first few letters and chalkboard comes up, you hit return, and boom, you got that. You know, and then you, you can just keep going back and forth. If I want to change the size of Cocoa Eyes, I hit Cocoa Eyes. You know, I go and make sure I'm in the type tool so I can change what's up here. I can make this a little bigger, change it to 100, hit return, and now Cocoa Eyes is big. Go back to the move tool so I can make sure I'm on the Cocoa Eyes layer. I can move it around. You know, and that's pretty much how you, how you do that. And um, if you want to change the color of this background, you notice that the shape tool says that. Oh, my doorbell's here, so let's do this real quick. I'm going to hit this red and and double click on it. And I'm going to change it to yellow. And you can see, there you go. And then you just go File, Save As. You save it as a uh, banner and uh, a JPEG down here. And yeah, you save it to where you know. I'm going to save it to the desktop. And then you just go back to your blog site and upload it and you'll be good to go thank you very much um if you want some more tutorials or interested in classes if you live in the seattle area uh, we're uh bigpictureworkshops.net uh, check out our classes on photoshop final cut pro and uh after effects and also when you get a chance make sure that you check out coco eyes uh, coco eyes the stitcher blogspot.com and uh, check out some really cool crafts okay take care talk to you soon